Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on how I've updated my ZMO Pro VTOL. This is it here. I had the previous one a little while ago and that performed very well, but as an RD pilot pilot, I like to get in there and kind of change how things work. And there has been an update file that has just been sent to me and I asked if people want to see me go through the process. So this is that video. There have been a number of issues reported with transition issues and stuff with this. Uh, so it looks like OMP Hobby were definitely still kind of learning all the tweaks and tricks. So hopefully this new firmware is going to work better. I haven't flown mine yet because I've been waiting for this firmware. So this has kind of been sat waiting for these files. So I'm going to go through this entire thing. First thing to note is that you will lose all your customization. So if you've changed the radio settings for the radio that you're using or the HD system, a walk snail or DJI or analog FPV, whatever it is, you're going to lose all that. So you're going to have to add all that back in. So make a note and try and recall all the things that you've changed. I'm going to show you how to save a backup of your parameter file for future reference. Now, although it doesn't talk about that for the process document that came with the update, I'd recommend doing that anyway. The other thing as well is that in the documentation it talks about just powering the entire model from the main flight battery while you do this. The flight controller does have to be powered for anything to do with the computer. I wouldn't do it that way. I've done it this way by powering it from the USB cable. Now, the reason I like it that way is it means that none of the ESCs are powered. If you're going to plug in your main flight battery indoors, remove all of your props. It's just common sense. Next thing is do be prepared to add all of your changes back in. So if, like me, you've messed around with the on-screen display, the layout, the position of everything, and you have it set up the way that you want, all those things are going to have to be added back in. So be prepared for that. That's probably going to take far longer than the actual update itself. And finally, once it is updated, go through each tab, each page in Mission Planner, and just check that it's set up the way you want. This update isn't just going to change how the VTOL stuff works. It's also going to change some fundamental things, like which flight modes are enabled by default, and also what the auxiliary channels, RC6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., all do. So be aware of that. Do make sure that you're reading the documentation that comes with the update, and that you're familiar with it before you start this process. So the process itself is relatively straightforward. I'm going to show you the screenshots of me actually doing it in a moment. First and foremost, you need to again power the model uh, with either the main flight battery, which is not what I'd recommend, or plug in an XT30 into the USB cable along with the USB cable itself and connect it into Mission Planner. Two things you need to do before you go into that. First of all is to get what all the servo uh, positions are and what all the settings are. You can either screenshot that or take a photograph of the screen on your phone or tablet. You also need the board serial number. Each of these boards allegedly have an individual serial number. I haven't got any others that I can check, but I can guarantee that there is a board serial number in here and it's easy to get that. It's like a six digit number. Just write that down. You're going to have to put that back in when the update's complete. The supplied APJ file can be flashed using Mission Planner in the traditional method. You just go into the flash firmware settings. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The update itself doesn't take very long. Once you've done that, then you have to go in and restore the default parameters. That's going to reset your servo midpoints, unfortunately, but it's also going to put all the new settings that they've and all the tweaks they've done back to where they should be. And then after that, then it's a case of checking that everything's okay. Going back into your servo outputs, you'll find that the servo midpoints have been set to 1500, sadly. Uh, I would recommend if it was flying well with the servo trimmed positions, I'd probably pop those back. And then you also need to add all your changes back. So your OSD layout, how you've got it configured for your radio and FPV and everything else. So with that being the process, and again, detail in the how-to documents that come with the update. Let's go through and I'll show you me actually updating this. So the first thing we need to do on my model is plug it into a battery. I'm going to power it from the XT30 that's part of the USB cable. I'd recommend you do it that way so that the ESCs aren't powered. If you do it the other way, remove your props. Plug it into the computer. We're going to get the little trilling noise and the USB connected. So that means that's looking good. I'm going to hit connect and this isn't going to work because I've not selected the right COM port. There we go. It's going to work better. And now we're going to get all of the data coming across. 
One thing you might notice is that if you have changed the configuration, so set up your radio, the VTX system that you have on here, change things like the on-screen display layout, maybe the auxiliary mode switches, that will come across as part of this file. You'll notice when we've done the update, the update, this part of connecting to the flight controller is going to be very quick because all of these extra things like the OSD1, etc., that you can see here on the screen aren't going to be set. So we're going to lose all of that. We're going to have to add that back in after the update. So we're going to go in setup mandatory hardware servo output and we're going to take a note of what all these outputs look like. I didn't have a problem with mine. The new update actually worked really well, all particularly checking the order and whether or not they're not reversed. You'll notice that the trim positions on mine for the top three or four are not at 1500. Uh, that is going to change by the time we get to the end of the process. But just take a note of this. I would take a screenshot or take a shot of it with your phone uh, on your computer screen. Next thing we need to do is get the board serial number. So in config full parameter list, we're going to search for num. And at the top of here, we have the board serial num. And we need to take a note of that. I grade by now. I'm not sure if I'll be showing you this, but who knows. So just write that down on a piece of paper. The next thing I'd like to do is then save the parameters to a file, all the parameters for safety. So I've got them for reference if I have a problem in future. So I'm going to delete num. I'm going to hit save to file. I'm going to save the parameter file to somewhere safe and give it a name that's going to mean something to me in two months if I ever need to refer to it. Again, this is very handy because in here with all the settings and changes that I've done for the radio FPV gear, the on-screen display layout, the auxiliary modes, all those pieces of information are in here. So I would just take your time with this, make sure that you've done this backup. And then if you do have to refer to a setting that you forgot about, you have it listed. So now we've done that, it's time to flash. So let's disconnect, go into setup and then go into flash set up, install firmware. Both install firmware and the one below it install firmware legacy have the ability to load a custom firmware. So let's go into install firmware legacy as it says in the manual. This is also how you would install older versions of Arduino Pilot as well. And then here in the bottom right hand corner, we got load custom firmware. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna find the APJ file, the new firmware from OMP Hobby and double click it. Warning, as soon as you double clicked it, it's going to start flashing everything. It's going to go into boot mode, reboot. It's going to erase the configuration. And then once the erase is done, it's going to start copying all of the settings across. So don't try this until you have had a look at your outputs, made sure you're clear on what your board serial number is, and also done a full save of all your parameters just for safety. And this hasn't been speeded up. This is exactly how quick it is. It doesn't take long at all. And once it's finished, then we can start to put all the bits back in. So that is the update done. We can hear the trilling again. So the flight controllers come back. So let's re-click on connect. And this time there will be a lot less data to come across and you'll see it will take a fraction of a second of what it did last time because all those additional parameters are not there. So first thing we need to do is back into setup, back into mandatory hardware, back into ESC output and confirm that the ESC output looks like it did before the update. Again, useful having a screenshot that you can compare it to. This is exactly the same. I did double check this. Note the trim middle positions are still what they were before. So here in the full parameter list, then we also need to reset the parameters to default. So that's gonna also reset the midpoints for the servos. So again, we're gonna hit yes. And once we've done that, the flight controller is going to reboot and we might have to reconnect. So here are all of the settings coming back in. Now they've all been reset to default. So that's everything read back, which is great. Let's click OK. Let's click on Connect again. Here we go. None of those extra things. Let's just ignore the fact that there's a newer version. Shame it isn't using the latest version of RD Pilot for this update. Next job then is to put the uh, serial number back in. So again, search for num, find that bit. It's currently zero, but I'm going to type in the number that I saved that is my flight controller one. Hit enter and then write parameters. 
click OK, and that is now saved. I would refresh the parameters and just read back that the board serial number is absolutely still there. That's just a great way to confirm that everything has been saved successfully. So that is pretty much the majority of the donkey work done in terms of the update. It's not that tricky, is it? However, let's have a quick look at some of the uh, setup stuff just to see what has changed because OMP Hobby have changed quite a few things. Again, we're going back into the server output. You can see now the trims are all at 1500, so it's reset those back to default. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, if we go then into config into the user params. In user params, we can see here that they have changed what these additional RC things have. So if you have your radio set up from before and you do the update, be super careful about this. They have moved things around. So the manual mode is now RC7, acro mode is on a different switch. So go through and double check that that's okay. Going back into setup, Let's look at flight modes. The flight modes have also changed as well. Initially, uh, there were just three flight modes doubled up into the different positions. You can see here that we've changed a lot. Again, be careful of that. Be careful of the way your radio is configured. You can change them in here, but it has significantly changed from the previous version. So be careful. Don't forget, you'll also recommend doing a radio calibration. Uh, come in here and recalibrate your radio and also recalibrate your compass too, now that we have done the update following the standard RD pilot processes. Unfortunately, the on-screen display stuff still doesn't work here, so we have a black screen. So I would then load in any OSD coordinates that you have, but that is pretty much the update done. So with the model updated, then it's standard stuff. We're going to have to add back the radio and the FPV settings as per the video that I did a while ago. I'll put a link to that. Uh, it's also in the manual of you know whether or not you've got the DJI system, the DJI V2, walk snail, analog, whatever. You're going to have to set up your serial port and all that jazz. You're going to have to add back your OSD settings. I actually uh, just copied them into a param file and just copied them back in from the backup that I did. Also go check your flight modes. As you saw, the flight modes have changed. So the three positions on your radio might no longer be selecting the three flight modes that you actually want. Also perform a compass calibration. I did a live compass calibration and just had a long cable to the laptop and just kind of waggled this around until it calibrated. Uh, you definitely need to do that. And also I'd recommend doing your compass calibration every time at the field before you fly. That was something that in the previous setup wasn't something that you could do easily. I'm glad it's been added back. You are going to have to report perform your radio calibration and just do that to make sure that everything is tickety-boo and it's happy and also your extra setup for the channels they've moved those things around so channel six might have been doing something in the previous version pretty much guarantee it won't be now so you might have to go in there and tweak those things too I would consider the first flight once you have everything reconfigured after your firmware update a maiden flight and treat it as such Go with kid gloves, make sure that it's going to hover okay and make sure that you have enough, easily enough height for two mistakes before you transition and go carefully. I'm going to do my video soon where I show you how this thing flies. Uh, I've re-plumbed uh, the pito, even though it's back here in a slightly daft position in my humble opinion. I've plumbed it back in because talking to OMP Hobby, uh, they're telling me that the calibration that they've done for it back here kind of takes into account the fact of where it is and it should work fine. So fingers crossed that goes okay. So hopefully if you're interested in doing the update, that's how easy it is. That's how I've done it here. Fingers crossed for the maiden flight, it goes nice and smooth. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.